we are starting off with how I introduced the isopods and the millipedes. If you haven't seen the unboxing video I got from Micro Exotics, I'll pin that up so you can actually have a look at it. But I was adding the shredded wood, cutting plants down, the coleus was just getting too big. I decided to take all of it out and just covered it over with shredded wood as it rot off anyway and the isopods can just eat it um, and you know the soil mites, things like that. I gave it a little water down just to keep the humidity inside and then uh, obviously I started adding the isopods and the millipedes. I added some shrimp gourmet food in there as well just so they could start eating it but I noticed the ants took a liking to that also so I, I can maybe use it now and then but regardless I still think that you know pre-killed roaches and things are just a lot better for them. Bit of a shame I've only seen these once since I've added them in but they are so beautiful. Um, I'm hoping obviously to get them reproducing and to see them around a lot more. As you can see though, I've got plenty of isopods, a little army going on here, and that's exactly where all the ants leave the dead, just near that leaf litter I've added in, um, obviously since I added these in. Um, the ants leave them alone, you know, they did give them a good sniff at first, but since then they've just left them. There's actually sort of like a mutual agreement between these, which is essentially the ants, they'll eat the live food to get all the fresh uh, protein. And then what they'll do once it's sort of dried up and they've probably had enough of it, they'll just take it over to the isopods or they'll let the isopods come over and start eating it. But whilst they're feeding on it, uh, on for the fresh protein, the isopods go nowhere near. You see this one ducks in, then suddenly just runs and realizes that, nope, that's theirs, that's their turn. They'll give us some after, once they're finished, um, and I think that's sort of the peace and harmony, harmony they've got there. They have got a, a good mutual agreement on that. Um, so, but it, it's actually fascinating to see. You can see here that since I added the leaf litter, you know, the extra bits of cork bark, wood, rotten wood, things like that, that the ants are very active around here. These are getting on absolutely fine. They're actually feasting on things near the ants now. They're not getting picked on at all. They just sort of stay out the way a little bit, munching on roach leg there. And you know, I'm, I'm glad they've just fit in because that is always a concern. My dairy cows have also done the same. I don't see them as much um, as these ones. I don't know if it's just down to the color of them with them being so colorful or stripy. They're just a lot more noticeable, I guess. But to me, they, you know, they're, they're happy and that's, that's all that matters. Oh, and some have decided to nest inside the cockroach. There's a few of the tunnels you could see there along the edge of the uh, trim. It's a bit too close to the nest and I think that one sort of guides them off. These are the tropical orange. To be honest, they're just huge, absolutely massive compared to, you know, the ants and the other species of isopods. You can see them side by side there, and the difference is actually crazy. Um, I do need to top this up, so I do fill it up with some Biformica um, Sunburst. So I've just got that filled up, and these absolutely, well, they always love sugar. Sugar is just life for them. I do feed them a few cockroaches every, you know, two, three days, uh, or mealworms, waxworms, just a mix of proteins so I can, you know, they don't get bored of one, locusts, crickets, um, things like that. But fresh protein, like I said, they will nip them away. So you can actually see that there, it was getting nipped a little bit, it was staying, you know, staying far too long. They didn't like it and told it off for being near the fresh meat. And this is what I just love about this setup. I was looking and there's an isopod stuck inside, <laughs> half in, half out. Uh, it just cracked me up. I don't know why, but it just did. Here I was actually trying to show the activity levels along the leaf litter. I then soon realized that as I was filming it, nothing actually ran across. So I was a little bit disappointed. Took another image where you can see isopods and um, the ants moving along. Um, so yeah, but you can actually find the same. 
I did give them some meal, uh, meal worm beetles, darkling, be or darkling beetles, yeah, darkling beetles. So I gave them some of those, but as always, these ones, you, you barely see them because what normally happens is you just drag them straight down to the nest or the holes. And as you can see here, this is where they absolutely storm out. It's just a constant line going from the nest holes, uh, nest entrances, all the way to the food. And uh, obviously that's where they will drag them in. Apart from that ditch in the center, as I've mentioned on previous videos, exactly where I put the food, there is actually holes there, um, you know, or a sort of like a mini crater where they drag the food under and dig and re uh, sorry, dig it, they sort of dig it out and then close up the holes every time in between feeds. So it's always really cool to see them suddenly reopen those holes and um, put the food down them, which is, you know, it, it is fascinating. And this is what's going to be newly introduced to my setup. These are actually the bean weevils, so I'm super excited to get these in. Reason being as well, it's just, and there's actually two reasons behind why I'm glad I'm getting these in. The first reason is because obviously since I've had morning geckos in there, uh, I don't know how many ants they'll be eating. Ordinarily when I'd feed it inside the other setup, it was every couple of days they'd take, you know, one or two small crickets, but that was about it. So to me, they'll probably only be eating a few ants every now and then, maybe it's two or three a week tops. It's sort of, it's irrelevant to how many ants are actually in there. So to me, that's fine. Bean weevils, uh, weevils will replace that with them being flying. They're much easier for them to get or uh, more inclined to get in the way of the gecko. Um, the weevils themselves as well, um, they do tend to fly around, which is more appealing to the gecko. But I've noticed that, you know, since I've added them in, I have actually seen the gecko take some bean weevils. I'm glad they're in there now. And that's the reason I started to introduce these. Oh, and also because, you know, it's always going to help on the bioactive side. Just be careful that if you do introduce them, you have to have really good escape prevention. Reason being is because they can fly. So they can normally get into places and climb around places that, you know, even your ants probably couldn't get to because they have that little, I mean, it's a really clumsy fly, but they're able to sort of use it to jump higher up or um, get between ledges, you know, which ants couldn't do. So, um, but this is mushy. This is mushy. Quick bit of maintenance here. I was actually just trimming the plants. I was taking some cuttings for ant antics as well. Uh, I actually recently sent him a little parcel of plants. Um, first, thank you. Thank you basically for sponsoring my videos. Filled up the water in the water section and then just uh, added some bits of food in, things like that, and, and that was about it. Uh, I have to do this every week, every sometimes twice a week, in terms of trimming and maintenance on the tank because uh, the plants just don't stop growing. So um, I did get all of those trimmed back, ready for you know another few days' time. Now this is Mushy. I did see him actually running on the tops, eating some bean weevils. You can actually see one on his tail there. Um, but shortly after this, and I'll expand later on that, later on on that, and you'll actually get to finally see one of the eggs that Mushy laid, which is super super cool. This is when I actually introduced my bean weevils. So what I did is I saved some spare soil that I had. So I could add that back on. Leaf litter, obviously I spread that out across over the top. I didn't want it to visibly just be showing in the corner a pile of beans. So obviously I had to then cover that up with uh, you know, new cork pieces, uh, a little bit more leaf litter, uh, things like that, just to get it more visually appealing. And um, once that was in, that was in. The ants do pick some of these off and they do dispatch them instantly. So that's also one plus side to it. Um, but also mainly the fact that I want the gecko to have more food that's actively flying in front of its face, sort of teasing it to pick, uh, pick, off, uh, pick it off and eat it and things like that. Um, so I'm, I'm glad I've got these in. I've actually got some more things arriving, which includes certain beetles and stick insects for this. I'm hoping they control some of the plants as uh, maintenance is very long each week. But 
I don't mind that. It's actually, you know, it's quite therapeutic doing it. But the main thing is that I want them to eat some of the ones that I wouldn't necessarily, um, you know, be keeping as trimmings because a lot of them now, I've got so many trimmings, I don't need to keep them anymore. And that's a bean weevil in one of the ants mandibles there you can see. I suppose it's still doing great. You can see them generally moving around the bean weevils. They're just all over the tank now. Like I mentioned, just make sure you've got good escape prevention because these will get in and out of, uh, you know, mesh um, exoterras. So if you are adding these to a biological system, just bear that in mind. Also out of all the bioactive things I've kept, these are by far the smelliest. Reason being is the beans actually smell after a bit and uh, they, they smell a little bit eggy. Um, I normally love watering this down or missing it down because it's, I just love the smell of it because it smells like outside. Um, whereas since I've added these in, it's worn off now, but the first like, week I've added them in, it, it smelled a little bit of like eggy, eggy beans, we'll say. Um, so don't worry about that. It does fade once it's sort of inside the tank um, and that will disappear. <laughs> I kind of just want to show you here how that ends actually really deep. So when you think about say my hand length in full arm uh, hand, I've got quite big hands in sort of soil depth, but it goes deeper at the back. Uh, this is all the way across. So when you are doing these, this is a 50 centimeter tank and you have about 25 centimeters in um, obviously soil. And then to the back, it probably goes about 35 centimeters. So if you are making these, just a little thing I wanted to mention there, uh, sort of off subject we'll say. Um, but yeah, the ants here, as you can see, a little bit annoyed by the weevil's presence. They do, you can see that it's, it's sort of showing some aggressive behavior, opening its mandibles, going towards them. But generally speaking, as long as they're not in the way, they won't bother them. They haven't really been bothering them since they've gone in. Um, but you do tend to find if they can get hold of them, they will, and they will dispatch them and take them straight down to the nest to be eaten. Um, so for me, that's good. It's just more food that's going around the tank. They actually get really close there. Actually, I'm saying if they can get them, they will. But to be honest, it looks here to me like it was trying to grab it and didn't. Um, so, hey, I mean, they could get along, but I know they're not absolute friends yet. They're still getting used to them. And at first, there's always a little bit of resilient with new things you introduce. I'm lucky with the isopods because I think because there's so many in there, they're absolutely fine. But generally speaking, um, you know, at first when I f put the isopods in this tank, um, they, they really didn't like them. And it's only the last couple of months that, you know, I've really seen a, ma a massive population boom. And, um, but, you know, just, just seeing them on the surface, feeding with them, and them actually actively helping them in a symbiotic relationship, taking the isopods to that leaf litter, and, um, you know, actually helping the isopods survive by giving them leftover proteins and things like that. And here, is the egg so it does actually take like 50 to 65 days for these to hatch so i just can't wait for it to hatch i'll have like a gecko the size of like my little fingernail so i'm just so so happy and it's going to be uh, hatching very shortly hopefully it wasn't a dud little fact here as well uh, morning geckos actually don't need male and female asexual um, and they essentially lay clones of themselves um, identical clones, which obviously will grow and will hatch. And if you liked the video, remember to smash that like button for me. It goes a massive, massive way. It's always going to help. And um, you know, remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and put those notifications on so you know when I'm uploading all of my new content or video updates on certain things that you are interested in particularly. But as always from me guys, peace and love, I'm out.